to quite a few people um, in my school, you know, I, I, I'm not saying this is a good habit, but if you mount us, you're gonna end up in Ashigram, right? Because all we have to do is sneak one knee in and mount goes to Ashigram. So um, that's, that's to me is a, is a pretty good mount defense. Once you get good at sweeping people over with this control and just, and just sitting on them, right? Um, now we're gonna move on to the Captain Morgan stuff. Um, I, I, I'm sure other people do this. We just call it Captain Morgan um, for reasons that I'll explain or not. Um, but I think it's super successful. Everyone I use it on has a problem with it. Um, black belts respect this stuff and, and know to be cautious. Um, to me, it turns leg locking from a place where gravity isn't always on your side to taking the advantage of gravity back. Um, one thing that we were talking about with the double outside uh, Ashi position is that when I'm in double outside Ashi, not so much, not so much in normal Ashi because I have this foot and the purpose of this foot is specifically to sit on him, right? If he, if he wants to, to come up and, and hit me or do anything, I have this foot to keep us away. That's why he wants to slip the foot off. That lets him move around. So this foot is checking him here. But once I move to double outside, I don't have as much checking him. And so, especially for me as a small person, um, what ends up happening a lot of times is that he'll push his hips up over his knee and stack up into me, right? And end up on top, right? And now I'm in this weird position. You can even, even keep going. Yeah, yeah, ugh. And then I get passed, okay? So I don't like that. And, and, and that's sort of how he's using gravity to help him, to fight for him. So that's, that's a danger from double outside. Uh, there's a lot of double outside control that we use that puts pressure on the hip here, right? To make sure, make it harder for him to stack into me. Okay, that's different. That's uh, maybe later. Back from normal Ashigarami here, okay, into the Captain Morgan. I'm gonna always keep one hand on his knee at all times. Okay, right now it's gonna be this top, top side hand covering the knee. I was here, maybe I was going for a foot, couldn't get it. Heel hooks aren't legal, even if they are, not always easy to get a heel hook here. Right, he's playing with his back leg. He's starting to, to push up into me. He's, he's threatening my foot. I don't feel like I can squeeze it anymore. Sometimes if I just have to stall, right, I can just grab, reach in here and just hold, right? And just not go anywhere, but not let him advance. But eventually I have to do something. So controlling the knee here, I'm gonna base up like I was doing a hip bump sweep. Everyone see that? Okay, this is a hip bump, get up. You all know how to do it, okay? And now, I'm gonna do a hip bump sweep, and I'm gonna do a knee slice. Put my knee on the ground here. Okay, so I'm, I'm now sitting. Now my weight's on top of his hips. Okay, I'm gonna continue over this knee as I sit my weight. Now my weight's on my knees, I'm gonna sit my weight back on top of him and put my foot down. Okay, this is what we call this Captain Morgan, because now I'm sitting on the barrel, right? Okay, so one more time. I'm back here in Ashigarami, controlling. First knee, second knee, back on the hips. Okay, sitting on his hips and pushing myself back. Once I get up, I like to put both my hands back to grabbing the knee here, okay? Now I'm gonna give you a couple details about what my foot's doing, okay? This foot, it was curved around his ribs to begin with. I wanna keep it that way because that's pretty safe, all right? Sometimes it's tempting to put your toes down to the mat right there. But right now I'm about to rock up all my weight over my toes and I feel like that's not gonna be strong for long. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm gonna break my toes. So instead, I'm gonna let the weight curl over my foot until I push myself up and then my foot's gonna come out and lock flat. All right, as I'm controlling this knee here. And I'm basically in the Ashigarami position, I'm just sitting on top of his hips now, right? It might seem like it'd be easy for him just to reach up and take my back here, but I have pinned his hips. He doesn't have hip movement, all right? If I don't control this knee, he'll slip out of it, right, and, and start moving around. That might end in a scramble where I'm on top, it might be in a scramble where he's on top, but that's why I'm controlling this knee at all times. Okay, so the Ashigarami to Captain Morgan transition 
is really about drawing a circle here. Okay? I'm going to come out, knee, knee, foot safe, and now stepping up, controlling this the whole time. All right? You'll also see that I kept his leg over the top of my thigh as I put my thigh up. Right? It was here to start with. I came down, didn't lose it, stepping up. All right? Oh, yeah, sorry. All right. From here, from here, he's going to feel like he's in a lot of danger. Sometimes this is a great way just to get that space you needed to put your ankle lock in. Okay? You could go to your heel hook here. Most people to defend will figure four their legs immediately, which is fantastic because you have a toe hold right here. Okay? If all this fails, there's a transition to a knee bar and from there into the honey hole. Okay? So I really, really like this this progression because I feel like I'm advancing and they're losing every second. Rocking up, sitting my weight back. A lot of people are gonna have a problem right here. They're gonna get out here and be like, I don't, it doesn't work, I don't have base. You have to push yourself back, even if you have to use both hands to do it. That's again why we started this whole class all about this Ashi squeeze control. I'm relying on this to be working, even if I have to use both my hands and I don't get to control knees. Right? I have to be using my legs to control everything. All right, I'm not worried about the finishes right now. Let's just worry about rocking up to Captain Morgan, getting that foot planted and just feeling secure there. People on the bottom, move them around a little bit. See where you fall off. We'll talk about it. Couple, just a couple details on, on moving through this position and, and then ending up in, in finishes. All right, so once again, really relying on my, my squeezing Ashigurami strength here, okay? I would love to have a hand dedicated to controlling this knee. All right, um, one thing that I think a lot of people noticed was that if I use the bottom of my triceps to control his ankle here, like I've been doing the whole time, right? This control has been in here the whole time. It's never really moving. See that? That keeps his leg in the right position. Really, if he really wanted to escape here, you know, he could try and suck his leg down, but he's just gonna end up getting passed, right? It's just a pass. That could be, that could be my setup. I could just go Ashigurami, Captain Morgan, knee slice pass, right? Nothing illegal here. All right, try not to crush the balls. All right, so generally what I do from here depends on what my partner, try, how they try to escape. I'll just sit on someone here, you know, and let, and let them worry about it. There's a lot of different things they can do, a lot of different things you can do. Again, you can go back for your heel hook, right? If you figure fours, a lot, most people are gonna figure four. Almost everyone figure fours. And so what happens next is you might go for this. You, it depends what you wanna do. You might go for this toe hold, the second you go over the toe hold, he's gonna blast his legs straight up. Trying to get out. Just gonna straighten his legs out, trying to get out. Right? And that's usually when I switch my grip and turn into the knee bar. Okay? Now what you'll see here is that as I've moved my Ashigrami, I'm 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 spinning around his leg. Like it's a pole, right? My control is still the same as it was, but I'm on a different side of the leg now. Still hooking the hip. Still over the outside. Okay, once I get to the knee bar, if I don't finish here, his defense here is he's gonna curl his legs back in, right? And that prompts me to move to honey hole. All right, so that's kind of my general progression, <coughs> number one, in this position. Um, once, if you, if you are playing, to the honey hole once you get to the honey hole um, a lot of times I'll end up going back to the knee bar um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to have everyone practice just spinning around the leg until you get to honey hole you figure force his legs here to defend again this is common okay so here's our knee bar we're gonna take our downside leg we're gonna grab his heel 
Okay, I'm pulling his heel into my chest through his knee. I'm gonna reach over the top and grab his toes and pull them across. Straighten out. Over honey hole, figure fours. Grabbing the heel, grabbing the toes, pulling them across, straightening out. His leg's really strong in this direction. It's hard to do this, but it's easy to do this. Okay, everyone, let's do it. Like I said in the beginning, my, my control stays the same. I have a leg that's hooking and a leg that's pressuring, right? Or wrapping, okay? If I can roll up, keep this control the whole time, grab the knee bar and spin into the knee bar, I will leave my foot on his hip here because there's a, there is a lot of control here, okay? But if he starts defending, starts pulling his knee back in and figure fouring again, you know, he's, he doesn't want to get knee bar. Right now it's gonna be a fight, okay? At this point, I'm gonna go back from submission attack to a position attack to improve my position. All right. One more detail about the honey hole that I don't think a lot of people know that's really important. Go back to here. Okay. Where this knee goes. Okay. I'll probably, probably see who knows we're here, but we won't do that. Okay. If my knee is anywhere but one place, he can sit up. Right now, he can solely sit up. Roll me back down. Okay. I have to turn my knee to the ground here and use this as a shield, again, that keeps us away from each other. I can be way over here, now sit up. Now punch me. Okay? So my knee, you know, I see a lot of people attacking here. This is fine, you can be here, but when someone starts sitting up into you, this has to be your shield. Boom, you're turning down to the ground. And that exposes inside, inside leg locks too, okay? So let's just do five more minutes of this whole progression, we're gonna move on, okay? And let's really focus on the end. And if I don't make it the first time, I improve my position before attacking again. Keep going, Memo. Oh, one on top of him, good question. Yeah, someone else asked this, sorry. I didn't say this earlier. So, once I get on top, I want my weight really to be driving through my ankle, into his thigh, into his hip bone, into the ground. Most of my weight's there. I have a little bit of weight on this foot for balance and a little bit of weight on this knee for balance. So I'm a nice little triangle, right? I think triangles are always really stable. So I've got driving his hip into the ground, my knee, and my foot. And I'm, I can be real strong here, real proud. Okay, I'm not, I'm not hunching over. I'm not leading back, okay? Even though that sucks for him, okay? You guys see that? Okay, so underhooking the arm. And now I'm dropping everything. All right, let's try it out. 